Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette Riordan here. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette. I go live Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 7 a.m. Mountain Time and Wednesday evenings at 5 p.m. Mountain Time for some creative practice and process. In this month of October, we're focused on Mary Oliver's Poems and Zentangle. I'm calling this month Poems and Patterns, and I'm having a ton of fun adding Zentangle patterns from Inktober Tangles 2023 to this gorgeous anthology of Mary Oliver's poem, Devotions. If you're brand new here, thanks for being here. Glad to see you. My light is kind of crazy this morning. If you hit that subscribe button and that little bell, your good morning, sweetie, um, you, you will get notified when I go live or add new content here to the channel. And yesterday I had a lot of fun playing some catch up. Good morning, Mary. Can you hear me this morning? I'm glad you're here. And uh, so you can tell if as far our sound is working. So we had some issues yesterday. Uh, we had two beautiful patterns yesterday. And the one today is another ribbon tangle. And there's a lot of these ribbon tangles. Thanks, Brad. A lot of these ribbon tangles that are tricky to draw and today's is no exception and it's called Acropolis by Zentangle, certified Zentangle teacher Joanna Quincy out of the UK. So I'm super excited. Hey Tori, good morning. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that Bob's knee surgery went well. Yay! Awesome. Yes, yes. Awesome, Mary. Thank you so much. Glad everything is working today. And Tori, super, super happy to hear an update for you. Fantastic, everybody. So I decided yesterday that this week I wanted to play with this one poem called October appropriately by Mary Oliver. And I think that there's something magical that happens when you read a poem over and over again, and not just once in passing, but that you learn to savor a poem. And reading poetry and savoring poetry is a creative act, just like listening to music is a creative act. It stimulates so many of our senses that we don't often make time for and it's simple it doesn't take a lot of time so sometimes we think we need so much time to go deep to go big to go long whatever whatever and yet sometimes just a few minutes of poetry and patterns can create the mindful presence that starts our day off in a, such a happier place and i know i'm really loving these mornings of poetry and a little bit of tingling Life is very, very busy right now. I'm hosting an in-person retreat in my home, not this coming weekend, but the next. The weekend after that, we launch our newest mythical makeover experience, The Wizard of Oz. So we have a lot going on. My mom, we're planning an 80th birthday party, and I feel like my shoulders are spending all this time like up here around my ears. And so I'm seeking ways to relax and to have those mindful moments of just presence and just being. And so for me, Mary Oliver and Zentangle are creating that. So I'm going to go ahead and switch my camera here. This is where I started yesterday with the beautiful poem October. So I'm going to read this poem to you again. And I will tell you the names of these two patterns again as well. And then this week, I want to continue to add to these pages and see what I can create. So this pattern was Scara, S-C-A-R-A, -A, and this one was Walnuts. I love both of them. They're delightful patterns. This one's a little tricky to draw until you get the hang of it. And uh, the one today, again, is a, a ribbon pattern that I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me, where <clears throat> I'm going to add to the page. But let's start, as I love to do, with the poem. Appropriately titled October by Mary Oliver. There's this shape, black as the entrance to a cave. A longing wells up in its throat like a blossom as it breathes slowly. What does the world mean to you if you can't trust it to go on shining when you're not there? And there's a tree, long fallen. Once the bees flew to it like a procession of messengers and filled it with honey. 
I said to the chickadee singing his heart out in the green pine tree, little dazzler, little song, little mouthful. The shape climbs up out of the curl grass. It grunts into view. There is no measure for the confidence at the bottom of its eyes. There is no telling the suppleness of its shoulders as it turns and yawns. Near the fallen tree, something, a leaf snap loose from the branch and fluttering down, tries to pull me into its trap of attention. It pulls me into its trap of attention. And when I turn again, the bear is gone. Look, hasn't my body, body already felt like the body of a flower? Look, I want to love this world as though it's the last chance I'm ever going to get to be alive and know it. Sometimes in the late summer, I won't touch anything. Not the flowers, not the blackberries brimming in the thickets. I won't drink from the pond. I won't name the birds or the trees. I won't whisper my own name. One morning, the fox came down the hill, glittering and confident, and didn't see me. And I thought, so this is the world. I'm not in it. It is beautiful. October by Mary Oliver. And I'm very drawn to this stanza, this sixth stanza here. Look, I want to love this world as though it's the last chance I'm ever going to get to be alive and know it. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful poem, such a great reminder, right? There's stories of a bear waking up, a chickadee singing, that bear silently disappearing despite its size, right? Something else that pulls us into its, into its trap of attention and the bear is gone. Noticing the vagaries of how we're pulled by the snapping of a branch by, I get my attention gets snapped when I hear Diego jump off his cat tree upstairs and it reverberates through the floor. I notice, right? And I get pulled away. So notice today what pulls your attention and how can you come back always to this place of presence, to being in the world, to celebrating the moments of being alive and knowing it. So our pattern today is called Acropolis and it's still a floral pattern. No, no kitties, buddy. Diego heard me call his name. It's too hard to draw with him in my lap. And this, again, it's a, it's a ribbon pattern. It still has an interesting sort of floral look to it. And it has an, a number of steps. So we're going to see how we get along with this ribbon pattern, Acropolis. And what I'm thinking is, I want this one to go down the side of this page. And now Diego's like gonna make a lot of noise because he's annoyed that I am not giving him attention right now. So we're gonna start with the ribbon itself. And I like my ribbons to have a little bit of curve to it. Her step outs show a straight ribbon, but we're gonna see if we can add a little bit of flow and whimsy to the pattern here. And I'm just following the lines of that ribbon. And then I ORed that ribbon, so two parallel lines. And then I went about an inch and I drew another line parallel to those lines. And once again, I'm going to ORA that line. It's a very long line, so if you need to stop in the center and start again, go back over the line just a little bit. That'll help you keep that line straight. I'm using a very light touch of my pen that also helps flow. And by the time I'm done with the pattern, you'll never notice that little extra bit of ink there. So there we have our ribbon. And then inside this ribbon, 
it looks like she added some markers, but she didn't share all of those markers in her step out. But I'm kind of curious to maybe, so I'm going to grab my pencil real quick. And I'm going to come along the top here. And about every half an inch, I'm going to put a little dot here. And I'm going to go pretty quickly. Again, not being a perfectionist and I'm not measuring every half an inch along the line. And then on the bottom down here, I'm going to do the same thing, but in between those two lines. So I have alternating little dots or marker lines here. didn't mean to have that pencil mark there, but you know, it's erasable. It's all good. And I noticed that she has those in her sample where maybe she was practicing with the drawing. And just below this little line across the top where each of these little markers are, we're going to do an upside down C shape. So like half of an orb. And I'm going to go all the way down the line. Let's see, I'm looking at the step outs and not in the screen. I'm trying not to let's see if I turn it this way. I can get out a little bit more out of that shadow. So just these little cups all the way across the end of my pattern. So that's what my ribbon looks like. We had our two sets of parallel lines. I took my pencil and drew some marks to help me keep my space as I went along. And now we're going to start to connect these shapes. And we're going to continue to use that same C shape, but it's going to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to take off again a little bit higher, so not right at the tip of my line, but a little bit up here to get a nice smooth flow. And I'm going to have these curves go opposite, and that one is it's supposed to go all the way to the bottom line. And I'm going to work my way around the line creating shapes like that. So you kind of see where I'm going. This is, uh, again, going to be one that might take a little bit of practice, but we'll get there. I'm definitely finding it easier to start a little higher up on that curve, even if those lines look a little bit of messy. So this is a new pattern to me and I am following the step outs just like you were following mine. So we'll see how the results come out. It's starting, it looks a little bit messy. I'm thinking I wanted those little cups to maybe be a little bit bigger next time. And what I love about Zentangle is by the time the pattern is complete, everything that I'm going, oh, that looks messy or that's a mistake, it's just going to disappear. All right. So step one was our ribbons. Step two was our little cup. Step three was adding those little curved patterns in there. And now we're going to add some outer auras around those little curves and some inner triangles as well. So I'm going to come back around and add inner auras. I'm going to go ahead and finish that one off there. Outer auras. So I'm just going all the way around these shapes. Always remembering to turn your page as needed. My hand prefers to draw this way. I am stopping at the bottom, sort of catch my breath.
and there we have the next step of our Acropolis ribbon, ribbon pattern. It has a lot of steps, but the end effect is really cool. And the next step is, let's see, I think maybe it's going to be easiest for me to draw it this way. Oops, make sure I get that up on the screen there. So we're going to add triangles to the inside of these scoops. So I turned my page all the way around. Let's see. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, ah, this way. Okay, we're going to try it this way and I might turn my page around. But we're going to go and create little triangles at the bottom of where we drew those cups. You can already see how that changes the pattern and we start to get that nice little botanical shape in there. Again, you know, moving the page around to make it easier to draw. I want to be able to reach those triangles without having to contort my hand. So I'm just going all the way down my line here. Filling in each of these spaces with those triangles. And then we're going to do the same thing across the top of the pattern with almost another sort of long V shape. In this space here, we're going to go from the top to the bottom and the top of the next one to the bottom so we create a long V shape. So we're going to go from the top to the bottom, top to the bottom, just working our way down, creating those V-shapes. Again, figuring out which way to turn the paper to make it easier to draw. You might have to spin it around a little bit. Some of those spaces are narrower than others. I might have to mush that little triangle in there a little bit. Some of them like this one are much wider, so we're going to have a wider triangle. And that's the next step. So we've got a lot of steps so far. So we had our two parallel lines, we had our little cups, we or and then we connected those cups to the bottom, we ordered the outside of those, added our triangles on the bottom, and now we've added our long triangles on the top. So quite a few steps to this pattern. And then the last thing we're going to do, we're going to draw one more line and then we are going to add some ink to create that lovely drama and contrast. I didn't quite draw it like she drew it, but I'm going to come here and I'm going to add another line inside that triangle as if I'm ordering those little inner triangles here. always turning the page. So that may be a little bit hard to see. So now I basically I have one, two, three, four lines. One, two, three, and four. So it looks like a lot of lines and it'll make more sense once we add the black. So I've got one, two, three, four little skinny ones there. Some of them thicker. 
And again, this one feels a little bit messy. It is very intricate and it feels a little bit messy and it's okay. This is my first attempt at drawing the pattern. Sometimes we gotta work our way through the through the mess. And I'm gonna stick um, option copy in the chat. I'm gonna put the link to her step outs in here on Facebook. Maybe somebody can click on that and see if that actually works. So the next step is to add some blackening to create some drama. So I'm gonna come back in with a fatter nib. So I'm gonna start with a PN and I'm gonna color in these upper triangles. So the open space between all the other lines the open triangles. Just taking my time, keeping it simple. This part takes focus and attention. So we're already starting to see how we're creating some nice drama there and some texture in a different look. Definitely have some messy lines in here. And now we're gonna come in, so I'm gonna go with a even fatter tip so I can go fast. Um, we're gonna color in these inner floral shapes. They're a funny little shape. And to me, this is going to neaten up so many of those initial messy lines. Again, just taking my time. So this was that original shape that we drew. And then all of a sudden we have this lovely, lovely pattern. It's amazing how we can neaten things up by adding shading or blackening. So again, this is Acropolis by Joanna Quincy. And this is day 17 of Inktober Tangles 2023 along with Mary Oliver's poem, October. If you're not familiar with Inktober Tangles and you just happen to stop by, it is a challenge every October. Of 31 Zentangle patterns. And I always love it because it's sometimes it's, you know, favorite patterns that I've forgotten about, but it's often a lot of new patterns that I've never seen because these days there are thousands and thousands of patterns and it can be overwhelming. So I love in this beautiful book of poetry, creating a little bit of a anthology, not just of poems, but also of Zentangle patterns. So there's our ribbon tangle. And do I have an eraser sitting here? Let's see. So I just want to get rid of those little pencil marks that are lingering in there. Clean that up a little bit. 
And then let's see, how might we add some shading to this? I want to see if she has any examples here of how she might have. Oh, interesting. She has some lovely additions to this that she did not have in her step outs that are super pretty. And I think we're going to add those. Hmm. And she even has a colored version as well. All right, so I'm going to move ahead with this same idea that she had. So along the, the edges of this, and I'm just going to do it on one side and leave this side open for maybe some more flowy patterns, although tomorrow's pattern is another ribbon tangle as well. So I'm going to go ahead and draw another parallel line as if I'm oring, adding an aura of that same initial pattern. And this is maybe a quarter of an inch. And then inside this pattern, I'm going to do a row of leaves. They look very much like you might think of a row of laurel leaves. going back to the step outs to just double check. So I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to have these leaves grow up and out. And this is literally just a very, very simple leaf shape with one little vein up the center. And as my space gets bigger, I can make those leaves bigger or smaller, but I'm just going to stack them all along here. They're like just very typical leaf shape. And the pattern might change a little bit as my space changes. This is where my daughter always says, Mom, you're going too fast. I like when I don't have to pick up the pen. So I'm starting here right in the corner, curving up, curving back, and not picking up my pen, flicking straight up the middle of that leaf. And just going both directions so that I'm creating this lovely band of leaf shapes. Continuing to just work my way up the edge of the page. And the name Acropolis, I don't know this story, but perhaps she was inspired by a visit to Greece or Rome. And this definitely thinks me makes me think of, you know, a wreath of laurel leaves and just adds a lot to the pattern. And I could repeat that <coughs> on the other side, but I'm just going to do one side. And then because we can, and to make it even more festive, I'm going to take my time and just add a row of simple orbs all the way down the edge here. Just 
just taking my time. The slower you go when you're drawing a string of orbs like this, the more even they become. And then I'm going to come in between here and just add some blackening. I think just along that top edge above the orbs where I've got some little spaces between those leaves. And look at the difference between that little bit of blackening and no blackening. You can really see how it just adds to that overall look and feel of the contrast. And I'm going to go ahead and do it along the right side because I want to be able to have some distinction between my laurel leaves and this open channel here to a little more separation between the patterns. And I'm noticing that uh, I'm gripping my pen too tight. So I need to remember to slow down, catch my breath. I'm in no rush. I have all the time I need. Such a good reminder when my plate feels so full. So there we have our Acropolis with a row of leaves and a row of orbs. And now let's add some shading to finish this beauty off. I'm looking at how she added some shading. So she definitely added some shading in these in-between spaces here. So I'm using, this is just a number two pencil, nothing special about it. Interestingly, the pencil doesn't smudge super well on this, you know, inexpensive newsprint. So it reminds me of, you know, how nice it definitely is to have those nicer quality materials to work with. And yet, I'm also just feeling grateful for the time, for Mary Oliver's genius, for this lovely, lovely pattern that's new to me. And then I'm also going to shade just right down the center. Of those leaves. Right? That's what I love about Zentangle, right? Every little detail. And adding the black adds the drama, but to me, when we get to the shading, that's when the magic really happens and the whole thing starts to really pop. So I've got my little smudge stick here, my tortillon. And I'm going to come down just right in the center of those leaves and soften up that graphite. And soften it up around this outer edge here. And still want something growing out of here, but as the week progresses, there'll be some other 
pattern that'll be fun to have coming out. Tomorrow's pattern is a ribbon of heart shapes. It's really tricky. I'm going to have to practice that one a few times before I, I share it live tomorrow evening at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. But I love the practicing. I should have practiced this one, but I didn't. And it all turned out okay, you see? All right, so there we have our Acropolis, our line of leaves, and our line of orbs. This is day 17 of Inktober Tangles. Day 17 of Inktober Tangles. Acropolis by Joanna Quincy. It's a lovely, lo lovely pattern. And I'm thinking it needs some little touches of graphite in here. You start to notice, like, where does it need that little bit of shading? So what I noticed was that the those white triangles down here beside the black didn't quite mesh with the rest of it. I'm like, okay, it's a little too white relative to the rest of it. And so all I need is to just come in and add that bit of shading here and here. And that feels better. And I'm even thinking how much fun would it be to take a white gel pen and what happens if I came in and just had some fun. Oops, dang it. That's what happens when I don't turn the page. because I always can get carried away with these really fun, intricate patterns and think, what else can I add? What else can I add? because I love the, the layered effects. The more layers we add, the more intricate it becomes, the more unique it becomes to me so that I'm starting with the idea of Acropolis and then continue to make it my own. And that for me was just what it needed to give it that final little special something something, that little oomph. So let's Zoom back out here. And there is Day 17 Acropolis by Joanna Quincy and the gorgeous poem October, which will continue to add to these pages and play with. You can see it's not, uh, it's just newsprint, right? It's not great paper, so I haven't been drawing on the, the backside, right? Just adding that little bit of white in there just made it really really pop and this page still I want these to be connected maybe I want a couple more walnuts on here so I don't con consider this spread complete but unfolding in the time that I have just like my life continues to unfold in the minutes and days and weeks that I have have a beautiful rest of your day thank you so much for joining me for <clears throat> painting in your PJs with Minette with poems and patterns throughout the month of October. 
I will be back live tomorrow evening at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. That's Wednesday at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. Thank you so much for joining me live. Thanks for catching the replay. If you love this video, please click that like button to encourage other people to come and watch as well. I will see you all soon. Have an amazing, beautiful rest of your day. Thanks, everybody.